Hey there, Susie here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to share this special message with you. Now, my co-host Michelle and I love masterminds. Not only do we belong to masterminds, but we also host a mastermind. We started it almost eight years ago, and it is the premier mastermind for women business owners who want to grow their business with a specific focus on marketing. Now, this group is usually completely booked out, and very occasionally we open the doors and invite a handful of women in. So if you're growing your business, but you're struggling with feeling overwhelmed, or like you constantly have a split focus when it comes to your marketing, this could be exactly what you're looking for. We have an amazing time together and the women in the group are extraordinary. They're great cheerleaders, supporters, advisors and colleagues for you. And they're also seeing extraordinary results. We see people cracking the million dollar, two million dollar, three million dollar mark, launching new e-commerce sites that go from zero to ten thousand dollars a month in sales. They're doubling their conversion rates, they're growing memberships, they're selling courses, they're growing their personal brands, and they're getting all kinds of media exposure and speaking opportunities and so much more. You can learn more about the Mastermind and join the wait list over at herbusinessmastermind.com. We're going to open the doors soon, so you definitely want to be on the list to get an invitation. So head on over to herbusinessmastermind.com. Hi there, it's Susie here. There's something coming up that I want you to be the first to hear about. If you love the Content Sales Podcast and you'd like more hands-on support from me and Michelle, we're doing something right now that's really special. Now, you've probably heard us talk about our Marketing Success Mastermind. It's a small group of business owners who come together four times a year in Sydney from all over Australia to brainstorm, connect, and get focused attention they need for their marketing. And it's not just the four live events we do four times a year. You also get private strategy sessions and monthly calls. And you get access to an always open online forum where we answer any question you have about your marketing. From reviewing your email copy to helping you plan out your next campaign or decide on a new brand name or build your marketing team. Now, this group is not easy to get into. When people join, they tend to stay year after year. So we only open rarely when we have a few places available. And that's what's happening right now. In July 2019 and early August, we are opening the door to literally a handful of business owners. If you'd like to know more or have a chat with me and Michelle about the Mastermind program and whether it's a match for you, go ahead and check out all the details and apply. You can do that over at herbusinessmastermind.com. That's herbusinessmastermind.com to get in your application for the Marketing Success Mastermind. If you're growing your business and you're struggling with feeling overwhelmed or like you constantly have a split focus when it comes to your marketing, this could be exactly what you're looking for. We have an absolutely awesome time together and the other women in the group are extraordinary in their own right. And they're also extraordinary cheerleaders, supporters, advisors, and colleagues for you. It's a very special group. And when you join the group, you get unprecedented inner circle access to me and Michelle. Now, this isn't a program for you if you're just starting out in business. This is for women who have already made some great ground and know that if they could just automate some of their marketing or more clearly develop their marketing promotions and become more of a master of marketing, then things would really turn around in their business. We've seen people quadruple their business, launch online courses, grow whole new parts of their business, build marketing teams, get more focused and really reach their full potential in the group. If this sounds even a little bit like what you'd love to do, go ahead and Apply today over at herbusinessmastermind.com. I hope you'll join us. Now, let's get on with this episode of Content Sales. Create content that attracts, converts, and keeps your ideal clients. This is Content Sales. Hi, you're listening to the Content Sales Podcast, the show all about how to create content to attract, convert, and keep your ideal clients. Welcome to episode 110. I'm Susie Daphnis, and here with me is my co-host, Michelle Falzon. Hey, Michelle, how are you? I am fantastic. Thank you. I'm very much looking forward to speaking to today's guest. I am also doing great, and I'm really looking forward to this episode too, because today it's all about how one piece of really powerful strategic core content can completely shift your business and even up new biz- even open up new business opportunities, which is something we love to hear about on this show. And today we're speaking with someone who has done just that. And what's really awesome 
awesome is that we can not only learn from what she's done from a content marketing perspective, but the actual content she's created is really amazing and has a great message that we feel is important for all marketers, business owners, and all our educators who are out there listening. I'm excited to dive in, so let's get started. Today's guest is the wonderful Melinda Cohen. And she is CEO of the Coaches Console, and that is a software and training company that's helped over 18,000 people create profitable and sustainable service-based businesses. And this um, software that she has, it leverages the system she created in her own coaching business for branding, list building, marketing, you know, enrolling clients, creating amazing client experiences and a lot of that kind of thing. And what I love about what Melinda has done is that she's integrated all of that into one cohesive platform so her clients' businesses can run super smooth, or as she would say, just like clockwork. Mm -hmm. And um, while Belinda Systems do keep people organized, um, she and her team blend coaching with training to help their clients create this clear kind of path towards getting results that are sustainable. And Melinda, as you said, Susie, is someone who has done some amazing content marketing for her own business, really creative strategic stuff that I'm always blown away by. We're, we're in a mastermind group together. And um, when she shares this with me, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And um, she's recently stepped out in a big way um, to um, create this piece of content that I've really, um, I, I just was so impressed with and I know Susie, you were as well. And um, she's pioneering um, this strategic content um, in one of the most exciting ways that I've seen content used in a very, very long time. And I'm so thrilled she's here with us today to share a bit about what she's doing. So let's go ahead and get Melinda on the line. Melinda, hi, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's so great to be here with you. It's so great to have you here. Uh, really looking forward to our conversation today. Me too. It's one of my favorite topics. Oh, good. <laughs> I've been busting. I've been waiting to get you onto the podcast. So I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to just dive on in with the first question. So, awesome. Uh, Melinda, you have put together something that has really blown my mind. It's a content strategy that is delivering huge results, both in terms of the conversion rates you're seeing when you use this strategy and also in terms of the results your clients are getting. Can you give us an overview of this strategy and how it came about? Uh, yeah, let me start with how it came about, because that'll kind of give you an idea of what we ended up with. Um, and in our uh, coaching programs that we have for entrepreneurs, and we have a software for entrepreneurs, for years, we were focusing on retention, refunds, cancellations, uh, conversion, like all of these things. We were just like, how can we do these better? How can we do these better? And one of the things that I discovered uh, is that in all of our attempts to make adjustments in all those areas, we always were looking at the symptoms. We were addressing the symptoms, but we were never getting at the cause. So we might be doing something and make an adjustment for retention in one area, but it might not have a long lasting effect, or it might be a fad or a trend. And when I had that aha, I was like, wait a minute, let's address the cause of what's going on with our, with our people in our community and our clients. Then you know, the coach in me, because I have that coaching background and that training background, I remembered, right, success, it's uh, 10% strategy and content, 10% community and connectedness, and 80% success. And there's actually some studies out there that, you know, they say it's 90% success, but the majority of it is about mindset. And I was like, what's going on with our clients? What's happening inside their mind as they're encountering our material, as they're, uh, whether it's going through our marketing or our onboarding or actually our course and content and our program material, what's going on with their mindset? And I discovered these patterns. And with the patterns, uh, I began to really identify what are people uh, saying to themselves? What are they believing? How are they behaving in certain times? And it led me to develop this new strategy, a new approach that we were taking with our, our members where we could integrate mindset work, where we could integrate coaching as a tool to help address the core cause of what was preventing them from saying yes or preventing them from converting at whatever stage they were at or from staying longer with us and, and getting greater results. And so that led to 
um, the the development of what we now call our villains and our superpowers. And it's a particular strategy that we use that brings coaching into helping them proactively define their success, identify their villains that potentially might come up, understanding what superpowers can support them, and creating that in advance before they ever begin the journey. Mm. Wow, I just love this so much. Um, there was something you said there I just wanted to clarify. You said um, that success was 90% success, but I think, did you oh. mean success was 90% mindset? 90% mindset, yeah. 10% gotcha. strategy and content, maybe 10% community, and then 80 or some people say 90% mindset, yeah. Mm, great. And um, I want to hear more about these villains and superpowers. I mean, I've, I've had a, I've been fortunate enough to have a sneak peek at these. They are so awesome. You've got villains like Oliver Overwhelm and is it Perfect Portia and uh-huh. Way Behind Betty, you know, yeah. and then you've got these superpowers like Do It Debbie and Let Your Light Shine Lizzie. Can you take us into a bit more detail on how um, how these villains and superpowers work? And I'm really interested in how like one of those pairs works, like a villain and a superpower, because um, we've kind of got both sides of the coin in us. We've got the, perf- say, if I see perfect Porsche coming up, um, that might be preventing me from getting something finished because it's not perfect or mm-hmm. from putting my hand up for a new opportunity because maybe I don't think I have absolutely every single one of the traits or I don't want to risk failing. Right. Um, I've got a superpower I can call on that might help me with my mind shift to to get over that sort of perfectionism. And so um, can you talk a little bit about the villains and the superpowers and just a bit more about how they work and, and, and what sort of results you've seen with that? Yeah, so when we were developing and we were identifying the patterns of what was preventing people from moving forward or they'd uh, experience stuck spots or start slowing down or start isolating and hiding – that's when we identified the traits of the villains. Perfect Portia is one of the most common uh, villains <laughs> that creeps up for it. I could relate to her. I'm a recovering <laughs> Perfect Portia. I don't know anything about her. Um, but she is, she is one of the ones, it's like, oh, if I just do one more thing, if I just make this one more tweak, then it'll be great. And then I can put myself out there. And we use that as a barrier for putting ourselves out there uh, to hold ourselves back and feel a little safer. Um, and there might be times when it's okay, but it gets to be a little uh, much. And so the corresponding superpower, for example, Perfect Portia, is uh, who we call Dr. Richard Research. <laughs> and but we don't want to go to the other extreme, right? So Dr. Richard Research, some people will get into analysis paralysis. That's a whole different villain. But with Dr. Richard Research, uh, that superpower embodies, I'm going to do the best I can with what I have from where I am. I'm going to research. I'm going to learn what I need to learn. I'm going to implement it right away. And then I'm going to review it. What worked? What didn't? What do I need to do differently and make course corrections? And then they're going to create that momentum and that rhythm of Dr. Richard research, learning, implementing, reviewing, correcting, and just continuing that so that in, instead of perfect Porsche keeps you stuck right where you are, Richard Research has you take one more step and then the next step and you keep that momentum going while you're learning and while you're improving. I'm loving Richard Research. <laughs> <laughs> he should be all of our best friends. <laughs> now, uh, I know that you've used Villains and Superpowers, this particular framework in your own business at your live events, and you've had incredible success seeing improvement in your conversions. Can you tell us a little bit about what happens at your events and the types of results that you're seeing? Well, one of the things that we discovered, uh, one of the things that I love, my personal approach to our programs and trainings and courses and everything that we offer, um, is to be proactive. The more you can be proactive, the better the results are. And so one of the beautiful things about the villains and superpowers and the process that we set up is that you identify these villains and superpowers before you ever encounter that resistance, before you ever encounter that triggering or that charge or that slowing down or the, uh, before it ever happens to you so that you can recognize it more easily. So at our own events, we have uh, people identify at this event, as you're learning this material we're sharing with you uh, for the reason that you came, what might potentially prevent you from 
um, being successful Mm -hmm. at the very end of the next three days together or at the end of our 10 week course over the next 10 weeks together, what might prevent you from being successful? And they do that in a place of enthusiasm when they've said yes, when they're really clear on why they're taking that step, when they can get clear in that moment and they can proactively identify the villain. Then when it does happen, they're like, oh, wait, I recognize this. I know exactly what to do. Hold on. Or they've shared it with some others on the journey with them. And it's like, wait a minute, this is happening. And you said this was going to be your superpower. And so right out of the gate, uh, they identify that superpower to reach. And so when we go to our events, uh, at the very beginning, we take them through this process to identify what might prevent you from being successful Mm. with why you came here. And then they identify those villains. And then we have them connect with each other. Uh, So they're like, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. There's other perfect Porsches. This is not just me. Because we get so isolated when we're in the land of entrepreneurs and businesses and the leaders of what we're doing. So they know they're not alone. And then they have this automatic built-in accountability. Uh, And they can self-coach. They can identify. It's like, wait a minute, perfect Porsche's showing up. Hold on a second. What do I need to do differently? And it's an easier conversation because they're, uh, what I love about it is you have somebody to blame. It's like, well, perfect Porsche is doing this to me. This isn't me. And then it takes it, uh, makes it light and fun uh, because we've got the villains and superpowers to play with. But at our events, it really, it was, uh, the intention was so that as they moved through the three days of our event, they could really take in the content that we had for them so they could get the best results for what we were teaching. But then it had a secondary, kind of a, an accidental discovery that now we leverage all the time, um, that it helped them overcome the objections of saying yes to themselves mm. for whatever that next step was. There's so much in what you just said. You know, you're teaching them a new language. It's a common language uh, that creates bonding with them. It gets them through the three days in a way that is sticky. There's just so much gold in what you said. Um, Just before I ask you the next question. Oh, actually, let me ask you the next question. Then then I have one other. So... um, Not only are they getting through the program, but it's very powerful for helping overcome objections and having them see the problem and now having a tool, something that they can change. Um, I can see how this lets people just handle their own mindset, knowing they can move forward. And and one of the things that we see happen um, a lot, especially for women business owners, and you might have found this too, is that any time someone wants to have a transformation in the business or go from one level to another, what Stephen Pressfield calls the resistance pops up and that's that voice that says you can't do that or it might be dangerous to try that or who am I to think I can do that. How might our listeners use this framework, the Villains and Superpowers framework, to help in that sort of situations where they're feeling that resistance pop up? Yeah, so that that resistance, we've given it a name. It's one of the villains, right? So that who do I think I am? They're not going to listen to me. What, I, why would they? And all those kind of variations on that thinking. Uh, that villain is fraudulent Frank. Hmm. It's like the not good enough, the I can't do this. Why would they invest the money in me? And so that's, that is a villain that's taken over your thinking, that's taken over what you're saying and taken over the way you're behaving. Right? And when we can identify, oh, wait a minute, that's a thing that's happening to me, but it doesn't have to define me. Mm-hmm. and we can recognize it as a villain, then we can make a conscious choice. It's like, okay, I get that it's uncomfortable, but I want to reach for the superpower to help me move through this. And the superpower is let your light shine, Lizzie. And it's acknowledging, wait a minute, I am here for a reason. My path has brought me here. I do have wisdom. Mm-hmm. I do have something that I can share that's going to support the people I'm talking to. So whether you're teaching at an event, whether you're teaching in a course, whether you're um, in an enrollment conversation on the stage or one-on-one, now you can embrace that superpower and just shift your mindset to put your attention not on the resistance, but on what's true and just acknowledge what's true. And it's like, wait a minute, no, I do. I might only be one step ahead of you, but I am one step ahead of you and I do have a lot to offer you. And so it, it helps to bring that confidence back up to the forefront so that then making the sale or 
or putting themselves out there, being seen or any of that stuff, now it goes away from being me focused and now the superpower allows me to, to be focused on them. How can I serve them? What kind of results can I create for them? What will their impact be? And then I can have that conversation, which is a way easier conversation than asking for the sale from a place of fear. Hmm. What I wanted to know is, have you seen any instances of people actually being attached to holding on to the villain and using that as a mask to hide behind? Oh, yes. And that's why when I first came up with the patterns, that's all I created. I was like, here's the patterns. But when I started looking around, I was like, well, there's a lot of people that have identified characters or uh, personas or things for the, the villains. But what I found, the power is in the redirect. Mm -hmm. uh, because people will, will uh, take pride in yes. being all over <laughs> overwhelmed. They'll be like, look how overwhelmed I am. And then martyrdom sets in and it's just funky all the way around, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the power is in the redirect. And that's why we do this at the beginning uh, of the process. So from that place of clarity, from that place of enthusiasm, from that place of strong commitment, it's like, what is the villain and what's the superpower? And all the attention and emphasis is placed on that redirect to that superpower Got it. so that you can just shift that mindset quickly. Mm, excellent. Mm, I love this so much. I mean, there's so much wisdom in this, Melinda, and I know it's come from, <clears throat> you know, just years and years of working with people and analyzing people and really trying to understand what where we where we all get blocked as business owners. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I love about everything that you're sharing and about this villains and superpowers framework is that it's a really powerful piece of content. Mm -hmm. You know, you've, you've had these made up into beautiful, it, it, this gorgeous cartoon characters and there's so much um, uh, kind of, there's so many levels to this content and it's totally what this podcast is all about creating content that sells. You know, so often people get caught in the trap of creating content um, you know, that just doesn't get them more customers. It just keeps them working hard, writing blog posts or, you know, getting those social media posts out every week that don't do anything or making videos that take a lot of time. And like you were saying at the beginning of this uh, interview, you were focused on all these things that had these short-term results. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, one of, one of the big mottos, uh, one of my big mottos, one of the big kind of uh, basis for this podcast is no content without conversion. And that is that every piece of content, uh, there's a real clarity around what its conversion job. So even though something doesn't actually ask for the sale, like this, this piece of content doesn't actually ask for the sale or a video that we make might not be asking for the sale, it does have a conversion job in the sequence of things. Um, even if it's just to make you more likable so that when you do ask for the sale, you get a better result or like you're saying, at the beginning right. of the event, event, you get clear on your villains and your superpowers so later when you are feeling pressure or you're feeling the, the villain rise up, you can do something about it. Um, so can we talk a little about this as a content strategy? Um, you know, how did you um, think about the conversion job of this content and, and what are the pieces in this strategy from that sort of content strategy perspective? Yeah, so it was something that started as one thing and then quickly we began to see all the other applications of it. So it started uh, from our own need inside of our programs, inside of the the users that were um, using our software from a place of retention, right? How can they get better results over a longer period of time so that this, that sustainable success, so that retention piece uh, was our focus on getting those, uh, you could actually call it a conversion, increasing those numbers for retention. Yeah. And as we quickly um, started applying it inside our uh, program, we began to learn that the content also converts, uh, increases engagement, right? So engagement right from the beginning, when we're using it, we integrate it into our marketing content even uh, because we want to address mindset and integrate that mindset throughout the whole entire path and the whole experience that our community, our clients, and our people are, are having with us. So it increases the, um, the engagement, uh, it helped during the sales process, like I said, at our events, when it came uh, time for enrolling people into our um, high-end coaching program, 
you know, people are coming to the back of the room and having conversations with myself and my team and they're self-identifying what their own objections are and they're reaching for the superpowers to turn it around and enrolling themselves. So all of a sudden the enrollment conversations, we're just listening and holding space and they're turning it around themselves instead of us having to work hard uh, in those enrollment conversations. So in those uh, sales and within the objections, and then it also uh, had an impact in conversion through progress. What's the mm-hmm. progress that people are making through the content inside our program? And how are they implementing it to get those results? So there's several different layers of, of how we're uh, applying this strategy um, inside our, like I said, the marketing, the onboarding, the engaging, and the, um, and the retention. I, I hope, as, as everyone's listening, I hope you can see why I'm kind of saying uh, at the beginning of this show why I'm so excited, why I think this is one of the most exciting pieces of content and content strategy that I've seen in a long, long time because it just is the gift that keeps on giving. And you were saying there how you created it from, um, you know, your own need to, mm-hmm. to just explain things and help the people inside your existing community. And it made me remember that that's kind of where um, the marketing mountain, which we talk a lot about on this podcast, where that came from. I, I was trying to explain, you know, creating a strategic kind of marketing funnel to people and it just wasn't landing. And this one day I just explained it to somebody as a mountain and they just, it just clicked for them. And then people started talking about their mountains and I was like, Ooh, I think I'm onto something and then I kind of developed it and it became a piece of core content. And um, that's what I want to talk to you about now because we talk on the show about creating core content and spending a lot of time thinking deeply about that content and then leveraging that content out in multiple ways rather than just trying to come up with like lots and lots of core content that you either spend a lot of time on and only use a little bit or you don't spend as much time on, so it's not as good as it could be. Um, You've really done exactly what we talk about on this show. You've gone deep with a piece of core content. You can tell just by talking to you how deeply you've thought about it and how how many layers there are to this. And now you can use that in lots of different ways. Um, It might be a lead magnet. It might be a full course or a program. It might be a a talk. It could be a podcast interview like you're doing right now. And you've really started leveraging that core content in some interesting ways. Can you speak to this idea of core content and how you're leveraging it? Yeah. So even uh, kind of what I mentioned before, what we have discovered is that core content, we thought it was just going to be a piece of content that our clients could use once they're inside the program. To um, Because when we know that when they interact with our content and implement what we're sharing in that content, they're going to get results. It's just the equation is simple. So how do we get more people to interact with and complete the content? So we thought that the only way we were going to use this core content was inside our programs. And then it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, And we began to see that really mindset and, and resistance shows up on all parts of somebody's journey. When they're challenged with um, being frustrated in their life, and you're meeting them inside your marketing, like you're meeting them where they are and their challenges, the mindset is a huge piece, maybe even more significant on the front end. So the more you can address that through various marketing uh, tools and strategies and tactics like podcasts, like Facebook Lives, like lead magnets, like blog posts, like uh, scenarios, stories, success stories where one of your clients uh, was just, was, uh, experiencing perfect portion, how she moved through it and, and conveying those stories, then the people in your community can self-identify and be like, oh my gosh, that's happening to me. If she moved through it, I can move through it. And how did she move through that? And giving them a model for hope that it is possible for them. So they can, when they can see themselves inside of somebody else's success story, they're more likely to move forward themselves. So even on the front end and then on the engaging Um, to use it in your onboarding and that runway from the moment they click the button and say yes to the moment they start with your content. What's that gap? That gap is critical. That's where the villains get the loudest sometimes when they Mm -hmm. click that button in their excitement. They're like, yes, I'm doing this. And they say yes to themselves and they say yes to their dreams. What happens in the next minute, in the next hour, 
in the next day, in the next week, in the next month, their villains are ganging up on them. And when you can address those villains and give them that redirect to the superpowers, now you have more people staying engaged in your program to complete your course to create more success stories and get better results over a longer period of time. So we've used it in marketing in a lot of different ways. We use it in an onboarding and we use it inside our programs. And then the other piece I love about it, because it's such a fun, unique, lighthearted thing, it makes it easy as a referral. Uh, so our people are like, oh my gosh, I just had this really cool experience that was unique. And so now it's also being used um, as an easy way to refer people to what we do. So it kind of covers that whole spectrum of somebody's journey with us. Love it, love it, love it. I, I've seen people create models you know, forever. And so often they're so thin. You know, it's a mm-hmm. mass way they find a some funky names and a hook and you know but it doesn't go very deep and so what I love that you've shown us is its application to your marketing to your onboarding to your engagement to your retention to how your clients are using it to how you're using it um, and I hope you've got it all nicely locked up in IP land <laughs> we do. it's all protected it's all good. copyright trademark everything's there good, uh, good. yeah we, we surely do <laughs> um, now I know that you have an opportunity for our listeners um, to find out how they can actually use this content in their businesses. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, so we, um, like I said, once our clients started experiencing the Villains and Superpowers inside our program and at our events, uh, they had fun with it. Uh, They saw themselves moving through their challenges and getting better results. And they're like, wait a minute, Uh, because we work with a lot of coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, Mm -hmm. practitioners, And they could see how this could be helpful for them. So all of a sudden, we have a lot of people, a lot of our clients asking us for this. And we're like, well, that's fascinating. Um, And so we put together, we call it the Villains and Superpowers Facilitators Guide. And uh, and we just put together the the process and methodology that we use for um, taking the villains and superpowers, right? The little characters Mm -hmm. and uh, giving them license to use those because they are protected. Right. So they have license to use those. And then we give them the coaching, um, the particular methodology that we created on how to identify the villains and superpowers. So they have that outline and we give them the script for it. And then we give them three or uh, three different scenarios on how to use it, whether they're using it in one on one clients, whether they want to use it in some sort of group setting or they have a team that they're working with. And we give them different scenarios on how to apply this so that they can integrate it into their business. And so we put that facilitator's guide together uh, for our clients to use with, within their businesses. And uh, I'd love for you, uh, for everybody listening in, to have access to that as well. Because uh, it's, it's super simple that they can download and, and make use of right away. Well, if um, what we're going to do is we're going to put this on our show notes page, but I also want to give it to you now for those of you who are listening. Now, this is your facilitator's guide, and it includes the process and the villains and superpowers and how to use them. And you'll find that at www.coachesconsole.com forward slash villains dash superpowers. I'll say that one more time. It's coachesconsole.com forward slash villains dash superpowers. And let me just say something like when you go to that, if you go to that page, um, we this is uh, it's brand new and it's and we've just created it for our clients. So when you go that you're going to see something that says, oh, I hope you enjoyed using villains and superpowers in boot camp, which is the name of our program. Um, and if you want to use it with your clients, click below and you'll see the button and all of that. So you're going to see some of our internal language. Uh, but it's the same facilitator's guide, whether you've been through our boot camp or you have your own business with your own set of clients. Uh, it's the same facilitator's guide. So just keep scrolling down past that and be like, oh, yeah, that's Melinda's program. That's what she was talking about. And then you'll find the button where you can have access to it. Well, thank you so much for making it available to our listeners. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't have it available anywhere else. So thank this you. is uh, I'm super excited to share it with your community. We feel very privileged. Um, and, I, and I just know what a difference this can make 
you know, to have these conversations early with people in the process with our, like you said, whether it's a one-on-one client, if we, you know, we're think, I'm thinking about our beautiful listeners, Susie, you know, somebody that's a, a consult, a tax consultant or somebody that is a, a health practitioner or somebody that even is uh, doing large kind of consulting arrangements. There are so many ways that you can, can work this into um, into your process. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, really, really excited to share that with our community. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We are so uh, grateful that uh, we, A, that we could find a time between our three schedules. <laughs> yeah, we did uh, and B, just, you know, just to hear your wisdom and to, to hear the depth uh, of, um, of the ways that we, we can use this process, but also the depth of your thinking around this process and what you've really brought to the world. I'm excited. I can see the world using these villains and superpowers. We're getting it out there. Uh, I think it's going to be something, whether it's not just business owners, but families and different groups of yes. different types. Mm. Uh, it can really bring people together to bring out the best of them so that they can keep moving forward towards their dreams. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. That was terrific. I loved that conversation. Um, what a super mm. smart entrepreneur. Really mm, good. Absolutely. Yeah, she's got a few of her superpowers going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really liked um, how she started off giving us that breakdown of success, which was that mm. 10%, 10%, 80%. 10% being, I think she says, strategy and content, 10% being community, and 80% being mindset, because I totally agree. I find mm-hmm. that in all the work that I've done all these years with women business owners and, and on myself that you know we can have all the skills we can but if we don't really handle our mindset we're just not going to make the progress we need to so I absolutely love that Mm, I I agree too and I I always go back to that statement that you say which is with me very often you know it's not so much business is not as much about what you're doing as it is about what you're who you're being and uh, you know that that really is that whole mindset piece and I liked what she said I thought it was a great distinction when she shared that she at her own events, delivers that villains and superpowers framework right at the start mm, of the event. You know, before good. before the resistance kicks in, before we get into that slump. You know, the time to sort of identify what those things that are going to hold us back are is at the beginning when we're enthusiastic and we're really clear about a project and we can think with a sane mind, <laughs> not with the mind that's like I've been awake all night and I hate everything and I hate the world <laughs> and I, I am, you know, just a, a big pile of poo, you know, that's where we can get to. But if we can remember that, that, that we are going to get triggered, we are going to have things in our business that put us there, we've got that clarity from before when we were when everything was clear and we were enthusiastic and we had all the energy oh yes this is my villain showing up and now here's my my antidote my my um my superpower and i loved when she said the power is in the redirect towards that superpower and that's a mindset thing right we've got to mm. keep redirecting ourselves from the villain to the superpower mm. and i love that melinda does that at the beginning of her programs but she also talked about it, that gap between when someone buys from you and when you actually deliver the thing and how mindset is such an important part of that because people go into buyer's remorse. Am I doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. Do I spend too much money? Can I trust this person? And I love how transportable this particular model is and that um, how Melinda said she's using it in her marketing. She's using it in her onboarding. She's using it to keep her clients engaged with her and to see better and better retention as people go through her programs. Just the utility of it is so genius. Oh, it's just completely usable at every stage through the buyer journey. And, uh, you know, I really, I, I'm so excited about this piece of content for her and her business, but also for all of us who mm. will get to, to utilize it. Um, so I, I, um, I loved that too. And I also loved that she um, talks about how she discovered this core content kind of by accident. And this is often how core content will rise up in your business. So I, I want to point out for you as you're listening, um, it's the content you share that really sticks with people. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I was talking about the mountain, you know, but you've got things in your business that when you say to people, they really grab onto them. That's a sign that you're looking, you, you're looking at what could potentially be core content. And when you follow that thread, look at where it can take you. Look what Melinda's thread 
uh, has done for her. It's opened up this whole new kind of part of her business. And I did just want to say, I did want to point out, you know, she, this is her intellectual property. As um, you know, as we all create content, we need to realize that that's a thing. It's a tangible product. And so obviously using this content is something that you need to be aware of is, is kind of copyrighted and all those things. So she's giving you that link to get that uh, guide so you can use this content, sort of feeling good about using it. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's such an important part of it. And for each of us to know that when we do do the work of creating this core content and going very deep and developing the models, that we do want to protect it. And that's something we've certainly done um, here at Her Business. And I'll give you that link again in a moment to go ahead and get that facilitator's guide, which I'm really keen <coughs> excuse me, uh, to, to check out. Mm, yeah. Well, look, I, I just quickly wanted to add that there was one other thing that she said that I, I just hoped everybody picked up on. And she said, she's talking about you sharing customer success stories. And she said, when, when, a, when somebody else can see themselves inside of someone else's success story, when they can identify, oh, that's me, that's when they're going to be more likely to move closer towards you, more likely to move forward with you. And so just keep telling those stories was a really important point. Thanks, Michelle. So once again, you can get that facilitator's guide over at coachesconsole.com forward slash villains dash superpowers. Coachesconsole.com forward slash villains dash superpowers. Thanks once again to Melinda Cohen for being our guest here today. Now, we love sharing tips like this, the gold that was in this episode with as many business owners as possible. So if you enjoyed today's episode, we would love it if you would leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. Um, Now, just a couple of episodes ago, we did a two-part feature on how to start a podcast, and it was so popular Mm. with our listeners and members, which is not too surprising given how many of our members are having conversations about podcasts in our um, her business members Facebook group Um, and one particular member is about to kick off her podcast for women 50 plus um, who want to stay fit and healthy and her name is Peter Gillian she's got a business called Strong Healthy Women and she's actually partnering with another member Yvonne Shepherd of Women's Fitness Adventures to create her podcast but this is what um, Peter said she said hashtag praise partway through the second part of the launching a podcast on content cells and I did like the advice that you don't have to do a website or a Facebook page or groups if you're spreading yourself too thin. Good advice. I think we saved Peter a little bit of work there oh, by letting her awesome. off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's one of the big aims of this podcast is to take all those people that feel spread too thin and just help them focus on the content that's really going to matter. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that, Peter. Uh, what have we got coming up in the next episode? We have another amazing guest. This is um, another incredible businesswoman. We love sharing amazing businesswomen and men with you. And she has used content marketing to grow an empire. Um, This special mystery guest is going to share how she grew an amazing business and still gets to travel the world, uh, living the life she loves, all while creating a solid financial foundation, which is so important. We're doing all of this for lots of reasons, but one big reason is to create a solid financial foundation for ourselves and our families. So this is a must-listen episode. Hmm, That's coming up two weeks from now. So be sure to subscribe to the show to get each new episode and to access the entire library of Content Cells episodes. We're on Spotify, we're on Stitcher, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Google Play. So wherever uh, it is that you most like to listen, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get that episode in two weeks' time. Michelle, anything you want to say before we go today? I just wanted to reiterate uh, your appreciation and thanks to Melinda Cohen. Uh, just loved having her on the show today. She's a, somebody that has always been sharing great content with me. And I'm so pleased now to be able to share it with our Content Sales listeners. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time on the Content Sales Podcast.